Okay. So this is called Ready Set Fish. Oh, there we go. Let's begin the narrative. So I like this, it's all designed in the source engine. It does show how flexible the source engine can actually be if given the right time and attention. It's quite interesting. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. So the trick is... Uh, whoop. And there you go. Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're going to see it a lot. That's the whole thing of when one door closes and another opens or whatever it is, isn't it? So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Alright, now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Let's do this. God damn. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? I think sometimes it's just down to beholding things to perceive them. You know. So the last couple of games we've had, when this, when it said you and I are entering, was very, they were very creative um, in two different aspects. But both of them kind uh -huh. of. So this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. I think it was about hiding things. Because you slow down on the stairs, and then once again the walls hide something greater as well. Which is just kind of like these these great things are hidden. I do love these opening shots though. Every time, it's just I don't know something stark about that, isn't it? Let's see what we go. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. It's true. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, it's and it has certain cool. things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. It is a good engine, though. The Source engine is fantastic. The tools available device. to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem <clears throat> to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Well, that's what you think. That's, that's the opinion of the narrator, but it's not all about linear boxy corridors. I mean, he's trying to show you that, you know, yeah, it does look primitive, but it serves its very, very good purpose. I mean, look at Gmod. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tool that aggregates different games as assets from the same engine into one place. So you can build things. You know? I mean, that's that's interesting that you can literally, you know, oh, I could get that wall and then I could glue it to, like, 
a chair and add jetpacks to it and then I can fly on it. I mean, not many other engines can give you that ability. I mean, well, obviously there is, but not much work into other engines has been given because Source is so simple in some respects. It's, you know, it's just better. It does the job. It ain't pretty, but it does the job. Oh, there we go. Just get through there. Love these flat developer textures, always have. Back when I used to play uh, Team Fortress 2 quite a bit on surf maps, a lot of the. Oop. Oh no! Oh, oh! Oh, there we go. It's, it's guided us down. Uh, we used to play on things called surf maps, which was basically you'd, you'd skip down a Toblerone to the end goal. They're very fun to play. But they're all done with these very, very basic textures. So I've always liked the the basic look of the Source engine because it's, it's got a lot of good memories in there for me. A lot of fun had. Funnily enough, about roughly the same time, you know, 2007, about that time, you know. That it was uh, popular. Okay, we're in. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. And the funny thing is, there are games these days that, like, there's one called This Is Not A Game, and it will literally make you stand there for 10 minutes until the game kicks in. It's, a, it's an interesting concept. So it's a lesson in stuff. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. I think it's just a matter of <clears throat> while games should be playable in some respects, other games such as these uh, pieces that have been made and designed, they're art pieces, you know? There's a, there's a narrative weaved into the actual environment itself. And uh, the game's you know, in, in some respects is played in the mind. How does it make you feel? What emotions does it conjure up? You know, I, I was told by when I was younger that art is art if it makes you think. And these games definitely make you think. So yeah, I agree with both sides. You should have games that are playable, but sometimes there is a time and a place for just experimental stuff. If we didn't have experimental stuff, you know, abstract, then we wouldn't have what we have. I mean, even even our own thoughts are, are de designed in an abstract formula inside of our own heads. Walk down there, no? Okay. So it's just like a, it's like a developing mind, in a way. I mean, so far, the games have, have gone from, like, a replica of a Counter-Strike map to uh, this. So it's, it's a development process, you know, an artist will destroy a thousand, thousand things over and over again because their view of perfection is completely different to what they've made. And even though people around them will say, that stuff's fantastic, well, you, you know, why are you throwing that away? You're like, it's not your perfect. You look at that and think it's good, but it's not my good. An important thing to remember. There's some three dots again. And it's, that puzzle. it's the puzzle again. 
with the exact same solution as the last time. Come on. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Music's very ambient. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. I'm going to tell the truth. I don't think it matters. Now, technically, I didn't. Uh, well, I did tell the truth in the narrative of the game, but obviously the game's been altered so we can progress. So, yeah. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. <clears throat> Again, perfect. Now, please, tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. Well, I... I do remember how I solved it. I'm gonna go with three. Sure we will. Okay. <clears throat> and so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Funnily enough, I think this is a a scene reminiscent of the Stanley Parable as well, because I'm sure this, this environment was used in it's the a Stanley lamp Parable. Post. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination. Which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. I can agree with that. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Them opening shots every time. I don't know what I, th I don't know what it is about them, but I just I like them a lot.
Now, I'll be honest, I could walk around and read every single one So of first these. off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. <laughs> I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it, that in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually <laughs> kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me, that I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. I think the uh, narrator reveres the, uh, the character a lot. Though in a world full of notes, one man will read all of them this summer. This summer, you will believe blue speech bubbles can talk. Cool cavern, bro. We're running out of space. Soon we will suffocate. Huh. There are too many messages in this area. Why? Hey, I can type here. I'd rather be doing literally anything other than playing this. That's not true. The guy over there wrote much wrong. <laughs> much wrong. Okay, I can't run, there's no run feature, okay. Let's see... I think we... can we jump? I think we might have to jump. I want to jump, I want to see what's over there. Screw it, let's do it. Let's do this! I'm probably, like... You can walk down there. Okay, let's do this. Hup. Oh! Ah! Uh, you could read me like a book. I'm sure there's gonna be one all the way at the top there. It's like, you shouldn't be reading this! Can you access the console? No? Okay. No. Otherwise, I'd, I'd, I'd actually no clip up and find out. Oh, that was a new one. I can assure you, guarantee, there is an acorn somewhere in here in this place, and sailors are looking for it. Right, huh? Boring. In a way, it's kind of like I've played it. There's a game called Kingdoms of Amalur. Uh, Reckoning, I think it was Reckoning, on uh, Xbox, and that's uh, that was an online game that was, I think, it was rushed out of development or something or other, and. When I played it, it felt like an online game with no one playing it, and it was one of the loneliest experiences I ever had. I played it for about five hours, and I actually gave up because I just... it The world felt dead. And it's not a good thing, you know? I get the feeling this is the same thing, but he simulated this environment to be like an online game like that. I refuse to believe. But ass but. I need to go to the freaking bathroom. Recognize me, please. Oh. Oh, here we go. There's nothing more. Go back. 
don't listen to that guy. A free t-shirt. Nini, other side, door, why are you so? Door, how open? Open says me. Mixed game includes door, cannot open door, thanks. Well, the stairs there. Maybe the door's not meant to be opened, or maybe you can just bump into it, no? Someday I will meet the person who made this. I help people because of the inter in internal the internal good feeling I get. New room. Okay, let's 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 just let's just move on. Because we could be here for a long time. And I gotta wrap up this part so we can get to the next one. But there is a lot of stuff. And there's that painting over there. Look at that. It's like a Jackson Pollock. I do want to... Oh, you can't walk over there anyway. There's a, there's a dead zone. Look, can't move. Do not pass go. So we've had done three black dots. I think I'm... This is not going anywhere. I need someone to talk to. Hey, preach, brother. Funnily enough, um, No Man's Sky has done something like this. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. So obviously the three black spots that we've been seeing, they're obviously hidden on this painting. I, I can assume. Oh wow, okay. I I never heard the whispering before. There is someone trying to whisper through that painting. I never noticed that before. That is kind of creepy. Do you wonder where I can turn down the music? Watch it be part of the soundtrack. That's the kicker. Oh, come on, man. <sighs> Devil Tower Star. He was himself the most horrible creature he could imagine. Yeah, that should be on my obituary. Well, I'm here now. Yep, we're all here now. There must be a reason for it, though. His terrible secret, he kept it well. I beat the game! Yay! At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. Or I read YouTube and the puzzle comments. is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. There goes the whispering. Come. No, it's not gone. Oh, I could just. Wow. 
I'm sure someone on YouTube has decoded the whispering and I am more than interested to find out. And uh, for the next part of the video, I will actually find, I'll find out the, the dialogue before the next part as well. I'll see if I can find it. Hey! I solved the puzzle. One guy that made it through. That is a loud noise. It's like a murder she wrote marathon in here. Oh. Okay. Be right back with the next part.